Alright, so this week we're taking a look at Kill Baby Kill. Now, I don't really know too much about this one, so let's just have a look. Kill Baby Kill, also known as Curse of the Living Dead, is an Italian horror film directed by Mario Bava in 1966. The film is cited as an influence to such directors as Martin Scorsese and David Lynch, and it currently holds a 7.1 on IMDb. So the film begins with a maid running outside a large house moaning, and seeming like she's being followed. She runs into a doorway, and kills herself on some spikes. We then get the titles, and the sound of a kid laughing. We jump over to some people carrying a coffin through the streets, and a horse and carriage pulls up with a doctor inside called Paul. The carriage driver says he'll go no further, as the village is cursed. Paul goes into the village and looks for an inn. When he enters, everyone stares at him. He asks if there's an inspector waiting for him and they all keep quiet until the Burgermeister, Paul Carl, tells Paul that he's upstairs waiting. We see the inspector questioning one of the townsfolk and not really getting very far. He's annoyed at how superstitious everyone in the town is. We might as well live on the moon. We find out here that the doctor has been called in to autopsy the maid who died at the beginning to find out if she was killed or if she killed herself. Paul mentions he saw the townsfolk preparing for a funeral and they rush over to the graveyard the inspector just manages to stop the gravediggers from burying the body of the maid. Cut over to Paul in a Tim Burton film, and he's waiting for his witness for the autopsy. She arrives, and her name is Monica. We get some excellent graveyard shots, and the autopsy begins. He finds a small coin planted in the maid's heart, which apparently matches up with the town saying, They say, only with money in the heart will one who suffers a violent death Ever rest in peace. Afterwards, we learn that Monica returned to the town to visit her dead parents' grave, which ties into the plot later. They say goodnight and separate. Paul gets ambushed and nearly stabbed in an alleyway, but the attackers are scared off by a mysterious woman. We get an audio issue and a flicker. And we're back at the inn. The innkeeper's daughter Nadine says that the inspector's gone to Villa Graps, and apparently people don't return from there. She acts all strangely, and a little girl appears at a window. Suddenly the mysterious woman appears again. She's called Ruth, and she's here to help Nadine, who is now apparently cursed. So they go around back and start performing a ritual. Paul hears all this and stops Ruth outside to ask her some questions. Ruth says everyone in town is cursed, and he should never go to the Villa Graps. Ruth gets home, and Carl is there. They're a couple, and he's brought another body. They say they need to bury the dead or they become ghosts. Paul is over at the villa, even though he's been told not to go. We get some lovely shots, and he bumps into the Baroness Graps. She says the inspector isn't there, and tells him to leave. She then sits down and freaks out. Paul sees a little ghost girl with a ball. Her name's Melissa. She vanishes, and we zoom in on this terrifying painting of Melissa. Oh. Bit unflattering. Meanwhile, Monica is having a nightmare with this creepy fucking doll, and it appears on her bed. She runs terrified and bumps into Paul. The bell tower chimes, even though the rope isn't moving, and they head for the inn. The innkeeper says Melissa died under the bell when she was seven. Paul just kind of ignores this, and sends Monica to bed. He hears some strange noises coming from Nadine's room, so he goes to check, and she's got, like, barbed wire wrapped around her. Paul helps her out with traditional medicine, and goes to bed. Some supernatural stuff happens, like windows moving, and he sees a light in a graveyard, so he goes to check it out. He finds the inspector's corpse. Meanwhile, Nadine is getting haunted, and she kills herself on a metal spike. <coughs> Paul and Monica go to Carl's and accuse him of the inspector's death. He tries to convince him it was Melissa, and wants him to leave. He also has proof that Monica isn't from around there, and her parents aren't dead. He goes up to get the proof, but is killed by Melissa, and drops the documents into the fire. Oops. They go back to the inn, but the innkeeper is pissed that Nadine is dead, and tells them to bugger off. They run and Monica finds a secret passageway that she feels is familiar. They walk through it to a family grave, and they find their way to the Villa Graps, and the Baroness tells them all about Melissa. It turns out that during a festival, Melissa was chasing her ball, and she was trampled to death by horses, and no one helped her because they were all too drunk, and she bled to death. She shows them Melissa's room, which she left the way it was after she died, and that damn doll's back. Then things get trippy. Melissa appears and Paul chases someone through a looping room, and it turns out to be himself. He backs into a painting and appears outside. 
who then wakes up in Ruth's house. She says she's going to avenge Carl. Back at the villa, and Monica learns that she's Melissa's sister, and the Baroness's daughter. Also, the Baroness is Melissa's medium, and can't help channeling her. Melissa appears, and Monica runs. Ruth shows up to kill the Baroness. Monica is freaking out and is about to jump off a ledge. Ruth kills the Baroness, but gets stabbed as well. Paul saves Monica just in time, and they're safe. We see that fucking painting again, and the film ends. Okay then, so what did I think? I thought it was excellent. It was like a very trippy Jalo film, but with a more gothic horror style. The acting and dubbing was good, the music was great, done by Carlo Rusticello. The sets were really well made, and the cinematography was a highlight. Just look at some of these shots. And the camera work was great too. It was a very engaging and in some parts quite scary supernatural horror film that completely took me by surprise. And you can really see why it was such an influence on some really big names in film. I purposefully left out showing a lot of the scarier parts. I didn't want to ruin it and it's really worth seeing for yourself. Now on to the release. It was good, both video and audio quality. There were a few flickers, but nothing major. We also have the logo and menu again. It's weird that they missed out a few and then brought it back. I had a few issues playing this DVD on my PS3 and PS2. Not sure what it was all about, but I managed to watch it in the end. And now for the case. It all seems okay. They capitalised Nightmare for some reason, and the runtime's three minutes off, but that's about it. No special features as per usual. Again, it's a 15, and it's fair enough for this one. It focuses way more on supernatural than gore or sexual violence. Overall, then, this film was a real treat, with an interesting story, genuinely scary moments, and excellent cinematography. Makes it well worth checking out. Now, there are a few releases of this in the UK, but I think they're all the same print, so if you see this one lying around, you might as well pick it up. I'd recommend both the film and the release.